Welcome to another entry in this video series on the solo growth model. Up to this point, I covered a baseline version of the solo model in which a steady state existed in both level and per capita terms of the endogenous variables of the model. With capital accumulation, growth eventually slows down until the economy reaches a steady state by which growth ceases to exist. In contrast, if we allow for population growth in the solo model, then only per capita variables will experience zero growth in a steady state, whereas level variables will experience a constant growth rate, also known as a balanced growth path. In this video, I will analyze the solo growth model with population growth. I would like to start by introducing the equations of this modified solo model with population growth. Overall, it's not too different from the baseline version of the solo model. However, I think it's worth noting some of the key differences. So let's start off with the production function. So the production function looks the same as it did before. So it's a Cobb-Douglas production function with constant returns to scale, where A is total factor productivity and alpha is a parameter of the production function. But the key difference is that now the labor supply is no longer constant. It is now time dependent. And since now the labor supply is time dependent, we also include one additional equation, which is the population growth equation. And it basically just states that the labor supply has a predictable growth path with a constant growth rate in. And as long as you know what the labor supply is at the beginning of time, which I am stating that the beginning of time in this model is period zero. So as long as you know that, then you can easily recover the labor supply in any period t in the future. So aside from that, the model is identical. So we have the capital accumulation equation, which just states that capital in period t plus one is equal to investment from the previous period, plus the amount of capital that does not depreciate in the previous period, where delta is the depreciation rate. We also have the resource constraint so consumption plus investment is equal to production. And then we have the resource allocation equation, which basically dictates how investment is handled in the model. So investment is just some constant fraction S of GDP, where S is the savings rate and it takes on values between zero and one. What I would like to analyze with this new model is first of all, can we find any form of a steady state and second, can we find any form of growth in the model in a steady state? Which sounds a little bit counterintuitive because when you think of a steady state, you think about the absence of growth. However, what we'll find is that there is indeed a steady state if we're dealing with per capita variables, but we'll find constant growth in a steady state in level variables. And what I mean by per capita variables Let's go ahead and say we are referring to GDP, for example. GDP per capita, which I will denote as lowercase y, is defined as GDP divided by the labor supply or the population, where labor supply and population are basically the same thing in this model. Um, so this would be a per capita variable, whereas GDP y is the level variable. So what I'm saying is a steady state will exist in the per capita variables, but not in the level variables. And again, I'll go over all of this in detail throughout the video. So the first goal then is to find a steady state in per capita terms. And then from there, we need to find the growth rates of the level variables once we reach a steady state in the per capita variables. And the way we can achieve that is by first rewriting all of the model's equations in per capita terms. So that's going to be our next step. So let's start by writing the production function in per capita terms, which I already did this earlier in the series, but let's go ahead and do this again. Um, so in order to get this in per capita terms, divide both sides of the production function by L. So we have A times kt to the alpha, lt to the one minus alpha, divided by lt. So this left-hand side is just GDP per capita. And the right-hand side, well, we can cancel the lt in the denominator 
with the LT raised to the power of 1 in the numerator, and what we're left with is A times KT to the alpha, LT to the negative alpha, which we can further simplify this as A times KT over LT raised to the power alpha. And we're almost done here. So we have YT is equal to KT over LT is just capital per capita, which I will denote as lowercase k, and that's raised to the power alpha. So the production function in per capita terms is simply this. So I'm going to skip the capital accumulation equation for now. Let's move on to the resource constraint and the resource allocation equation. So if you divide both sides of the resource constraint by L, well, that one's very straightforward. You just get consumption per capita, so lowercase c, plus investment per capita is equal to GDP per capita. And then in terms of our resource allocation equation, again, divide each side by L and you get investment per capita is equal to the savings rate times GDP per capita. So those three equations are relatively straightforward. However, the capital accumulation equation will take a little bit more work to write in per capita terms. Now we're ready to rewrite the capital accumulation equation in per capita terms. So start off by subtracting KT from each side. So we have KT plus one minus KT is equal to investment minus depreciation. So now let's go ahead and divide each side by the population. And I'm also going to multiply the left-hand side by KT and also divide it by KT. So you'll see this nifty little trick actually pay off here. So let's first start by analyzing the right-hand side, which is straightforward. We have investment per capital or per capita minus the depreciation rate times capital per capita. And then I'm going to rearrange terms on the left-hand side such that I have capital over the population. And then I have KT plus one minus KT over KT. This first term here is clearly capital per capita. This second term is the growth rate of capital, which you should notice here that this is clearly a growth rate because we have the one period change in capital over the initial value of capital in period T. So to further simplify this, I am going to show you a useful growth rate rule. So suppose I have some variable such as capital per capita, and it is equal to some other variable, which in this case is capital, divided by another variable where all of these variables have growth rates. And I'm also going to have to assume that these variables have constant growth rates. Well, then it follows that the growth rate of capital per capita is equal to the growth rate of capital minus the growth rate of the population, which this is just in. So this growth rate operator sort of acts like a natural log. One thing to note is that outside of a steady state, we cannot expect that the growth rate of capital will be constant. However, this is okay as an approximation and really we're concerned with the steady state anyways. So we can actually go ahead and use this. So if I rewrite this by adding n to each side, I have the growth rate of capital is equal to the growth rate of capital per capita plus n. So let's go ahead and plug that in for the growth rate of capital. So I have KT times the growth rate of capital per capita plus the population growth rate and that is equal to investment per capita minus depreciation per capita. And we are almost done here. So subtract the population growth rate times capital per capita from each side. And we are left with KT 
times this growth rate is equal to investment per capita minus delta plus n times kt. And the last step here is to note that the growth rate of capital per capita is going to be equal to kt plus 1 minus kt divided by kt. So this kt in the numerator will cancel with a kt in the denominator, and we're just left with kt plus 1 minus kt, which I can also rewrite that as delta kt plus 1, indicating this is the one period change in, the, in capital per capita. So finally, the per capita version of the capital accumulation equation is delta kt plus 1 equal to investment minus depreciation plus population growth times kt. Now we are ready to find the steady state of our model for the per capita variables. So recall that in a steady state, all endogenous variables are constant, or in this case, I'm referring to the per capita versions of those endogenous variables. So specifically, in a steady state, it follows that kt is equal to some constant. Let's go ahead and call that k star. Furthermore, we will also have GDP per capita equal to some constant. Let's call that y star. Investment per capita, we'll call that I star. And then we have consumption per capita, that is C star. So let's analyze the capital accumulation equation in a steady state. So because capital is constant, well, that implies that the change in capital is zero in a steady state. And then we just plug in our steady state values for investment and capital. So we have I star minus delta plus n times k star. And I can add this term delta plus n times k star to each side and I just get delta plus n k star equal to i star. So we can simplify this a little bit more by utilizing our resource allocation equation. So we know that investment is equal to savings times GDP, or I'm evaluating this in per capita terms at a steady state. Furthermore, GDP is dictated by the production function. So I'm just plugging in the production function in the steady state, and I can go ahead and plug this in for investment. And so what I'm left with is delta plus N times K star is equal to S A K star to the alpha. And this is actually quite useful because now I have one equation and one unknown where that unknown is capital per capita. So if I solve for K star, I can then find the remaining endogenous variables quite easily. So divide each side by delta plus N, also divide each side by K to the alpha, and I get K star to the one minus alpha is equal to S A over delta plus n, and now raise each side to the power one over one minus alpha. And that will give us a closed form solution for capital per capita in a steady state, which is S A over delta plus n, raise the power one over one minus alpha. And from here, we can actually get GDP per capita quite easily because GDP per capita is just the production function where we just plug in K star for K in the production function. That will give us GDP per capita. We can get investment per capita with our solution for GDP per capita using the resource allocation equation. And finally, we can get consumption per capita by using the resource constraint, which tells us that consumption is GDP minus investment. And so we can find all steady state values for these per capita variables. The last topic I'd like to cover in this video is that of a balanced growth path. So we know that the per capita variables of the model in a steady state are constant, so there is zero growth in those variables. 
However, that is not the case for the level variables of the model, which are the non per capita terms. So specifically, GDP, consumption, investment, and capital. Instead, what happens is they end up with constant growth rates. This is also known as a balanced growth path. So I would like to derive those constant growth rates. And the way I'm gonna do that is by first writing out, let's say for example, GDP per capita, which is equal to GDP divided by the population. And now I will use a growth rate rule in order to write this in terms of growth rates. So the growth rate of GDP per capita is equal to the growth rate of GDP minus the population growth rate, which is N. So we know that in a steady state, the growth rate of GDP per capita is zero because in a steady state, all per capita variables are constant. Therefore, it follows that the growth rate of GDP per capita is equal to the constant growth rate of the population. In fact, this follows for all three other endogenous level variables because we can write them all the same way in their per capita terms. And so we'll end up with this exact same result. So we found a balanced growth path, and this is the key difference between the version of the solo model with population growth and the version without population growth. That difference is specifically that the level variables are not constant in a steady state. Instead, they have constant growth rates, which implies that they're on a balanced growth path.